My name is Michał Hermanowicz, and uh, I represent uh, the Interdisciplinary Center for Mathematical and uh, Computational Modeling at the University of Warsaw. Um, I work as a uh, research and technical specialist uh, in the application software and uh, user support group uh, here at ICM. Uh, it is my great pleasure to uh, be hosting this session uh, along with my colleague uh, Jarosław Skomiał, who uh, works as a data center and uh, network operations team manager. The presentation concerns uh, supercomputing and uh, the uh, transcontinental uh, ultra-fast uh, data transfer as uh, as a particular example of uh, of a project that ICM um, uh, has been involved in. Uh, we will start with um, a bit of a general uh, introduction to the topic as well as uh, an overview of uh, some of the projects that uh, we've been working on. And uh, right after that, uh, my uh, colleague will continue on with the details for uh, the second part. Um, of the uh, of the presentation, um, so let me um, let me uh, start with um, uh, let me start with uh, some of the background uh, information about uh, the ICM itself. It is uh, a part of uh, the University of Warsaw, which um, is the largest uh, university in Poland with uh, twenty four faculties and uh, thirty academic and research units. Uh, the university uh, dates back to eighteen sixteen. And uh, today uh, we do have uh, well over uh, 40,000 students and uh, uh, 7,500 employees. Uh, ICM as a structural uh, unit of the university uh, and uh, as an HBC center has been established in uh, 1993. And uh, what it does is uh, it provides uh, its, uh, its users with uh, uh, both the high performance computing infrastructure as well as uh, services that are uh, crucial for uh, conducting computational research in uh, uh, various uh, fields of science. Uh, it is not, however, limited to uh, to academic projects, since we do also uh, provide um, our services um, uh, uh, to uh, to some extent to businesses and uh, to the public sector um, as well. Uh, there are four distinct uh, areas of, um, of expertise that uh, reflect uh, our engagement in, in various projects, uh, and these are uh, data analysis, uh, meaning processing of, uh, of large volumes of, of complex data structures. Uh, there's education and uh, those educational uh, activities range from uh, HPC training to, to regular uh, master degree program that we offer to our students. And uh, now a large part of, of what we do is, of course, modeling and, and simulation, which uh, refers to a uh, wide variety of uh, research initiatives and, and which is directly related to uh, high performance computing, which is uh, the key aspect of, uh, uh, of this presentation. Uh, Supercomputing itself uh, is uh, a very broad topic, which uh, uh, which which can be uh, approached in in a number of ways. Uh, what I'd like to begin with uh, is uh, the, the technological context, which uh, uh, is very often expressed in uh, what we call the Moore's law. Uh, it is uh, commonly used to reflect the uh, the fundamental limitations of uh, of the semiconductor based or, or silicon based really uh, technology, and uh, which is uh, which is used to uh, to manufacture uh, integrated circuits or, or really the building blocks of of modern uh, uh, electronic devices. Uh, now, uh, th this is a very general uh, trend which uh, affects uh, all sorts of computing devices uh, from the uh, off-the-shelf consumer products to, uh, to state-of-the-art supercomputers. Uh, as we approach the uh, physical limitations, uh, such as those related to miniaturization or uh, related to a number of transistors uh, that can fit within a unit space, then uh, the technology changes to, to make room for progress. And uh, so at some point we've had uh, CPUs evolving into uh, multi-core uh, architectures to uh, become a basis for uh, modern uh, computers with uh, practically very little uh, change in the CPU clock frequencies, for example. Uh, the reason I'm referring to uh, to this architecture evolution is uh, the fact that those uh, multi-core designs uh, became a major step uh, towards uh, increasing computer performance. Uh, and it is the performance and, and technology scaling that is of crucial importance when it comes to uh, supercomputers. Uh, this process involves uh, not just the hardware, but uh, also uh, simultaneously software solutions that uh, are developed 
uh, to ensure uh, proper standardized uh, standardized communication schemes uh, between the CPU cores, including mapping of the tasks and uh, synchronizing data. Um, of course, programs that uh, make use of such architectures and, and uh, run in parallel is it is something that is not unique to what a supercomputer does uh, this can be done on a, on a regular off-the-shelf desktop computer as well and this is ensured by various standards involving uh, software development tool chains uh, libraries apis and uh, etc um, so what is it that distinguishes a supercomputer from from a regular uh, multi-core end-user desktop it is not very uh, very strictly defined uh, what we usually have in mind where we, um, uh, when, when we refer to a supercomputer, is that uh, uh, it is a class of computers achieving the highest performance uh, given the contemporary technology. Uh, so, in other words, um, at any given time, we do have a class of uh, computing devices uh, offering the highest achievable. Uh, performance uh, with the most advanced technology available. Uh, so those machines, as a result, uh, exceed enormously uh, the capabilities of regular uh, regular computers. And uh, so that's the super part. And, and the supercomputing of, of today uh, relies uh, very much on both uh, multi-CPU as well as uh, what we call multi-node uh, architecture so that uh, we can have many uh, computing units or nodes uh, operating within the framework of, um, of a larger device. And uh, those nodes are, of course, um, interconnected uh, with the efficient network, which which is the fundamental um, uh, for for the operation of um, of the entire system. Uh, the programs that uh, are executed on on such machines uh, have to be designed uh, specifically to run uh, within a hardware and software ecosystem to uh, to support um, uh, certain operating systems, uh, parallel programming models, and and so on. Uh, now, these uh, parallel programming models uh, do depend on, on the hardware architecture design. And uh, let me just briefly address uh, the uh, shared and distributed memory systems that uh, uh, require uh, a very different um, uh, software approaches. Uh, so we can have a shared memory system where the CPU cores uh, can access uh, all the memory address space. And uh, this is something that uh, with some level of, of simplification, of course, uh, happens within a single node. Uh, of a computer cluster. So um, we can program uh, applications like that, uh, for example, within the, uh, the OpenMP standard uh, designed specifically for, uh, for, so, uh, for such uh, shared memory architectures. Uh, once we move on, however, from, from a single standalone computer node to, to a cluster of interconnected nodes, then we also need to deal uh, with all sorts of problems uh, of, of inter-node communication, uh, data synchronization, and, and so on and, and so forth, which uh, requires an entirely different approach, something that we can do uh, with uh, a message passing interface uh, or MPI as, as an example. Um, as I've already mentioned uh, before, these architecture models are uh, not unique to supercomputing because we can use those solutions on, on desktop uh, computers as well. The difference, however, will be um, in the scale and in the resulting performance, which uh, uh, relies uh, not just on the parameters of individual nodes, but also on the network, on uh, fast and reliable storage systems, etc. Uh, on the other hand, it is, uh, of course, technically possible to, to build a, a computer cluster with desktop components and a regular home network, uh, such as uh, the machines uh, derived uh, from the Beowulf project, uh, so the Beowulf-like machines, which uh, still, while not being a supercomputer, might, might, uh, uh, might be a reliable uh, solution for some class of, uh, of problems. Uh, so to move on to the actual HPC uh, infrastructure that uh, ICM offers, um, uh, we do have uh, two main machines in operation that uh, are used for most of our uh, research projects. Um, one of those is the uh, the Cray XC40 named Okeanos uh, with uh, more than uh, 26,000 CPU cores in total and uh, with a single node having uh, 24 cores and 128 uh, gigabytes of RAM. Uh, the other machine is a Huawei cluster uh, called Topola with uh, more than 6,000 CPU cores in total 
and uh, with a single uh, node equipped with uh, uh, 28 cores and uh, either 64 or 128 gigabytes of RAM, depending on uh, the user's uh, requirements. Uh, these computers are involved in most of the projects uh, here at ICM. And um, apart from this uh, hardware architecture, however, we do also provide other services, including complex research and, and technical uh, user support. Uh, most components of um, ICM's infrastructure are located in uh, our uh, our newest data center in, in Warsaw, uh, built in 2015 and called the Technology Center. It has a uh, four uh, megawatt uh, power line and has the total of uh, two petaflops of computing power and uh, the total of uh, 25 petabytes of, uh, um, um, uh, of storage space. Uh, now, uh, among the uh, the variety of uh, of research projects that uh, we work on, I would like to briefly uh, list and and highlight uh, those of particular importance. Uh, this list is is not a complete one. Uh, it does, however. Uh, give uh, an idea of the kind of problems that uh, are solved with uh, uh, our supercomputers. Um, the numerical weather uh, portal certainly belongs to uh, the very well-known services provided by ICM. Uh, it is hosted at meteo.pl website and uh, the weather predictions uh, up to 120 hours in advance are uh, calculated within the unified model and uh, published uh, regularly online. Uh, the service uh, has been established uh, nearly 27 years ago and uh, is used uh, by the public sector, by by the researchers, and uh, as well as uh, as well as commercial commercial uh, entities. Uh, one of the younger initiatives, on the other hand, is the. Um, ICM's uh, epidemiological uh, model, which uh, has been successfully used to describe the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic in Poland. Uh, so the model uh, works uh, at the nationwide level and uh, it provides both the uh, short-term predictions as well as uh, the potential long-term variants of, of the pandemic development, also taking into account um, the administrative uh, restrictions that uh, are being imposed in the country. Uh, the ICM uh, researchers uh, working on the model uh, do, do cooperate uh, closely with uh, the Ministry of Health and with the RCB, which is the, uh, the government center for, for security. Uh, the project is hosted at uh, covid19.icm.edu.pl website uh, for those who would be interested in uh, the computational uh, details. Um, other projects include GATO, which uh, stands for uh, Global Air Transport Optimizer. Uh, this one is a joint undertaking of uh, ICM and um, International uh, Civil Aviation Organization. Uh, it is uh, a state-of-the-art uh, aviation analytics system uh, which um, operates on uh, an integrated repository of air traffic data to allow for its uh, planning and and, uh, and optimization. Uh, apart from, from those projects that, that are uh, strictly computational in nature, ICM also does play uh, an important role in, in providing Polish researchers with uh, scientific literature within the project uh, known as uh, the Virtual Library of Science. Uh, the literature includes over uh, 20, uh, 26,000 uh, journal titles and uh, over uh, 150,000 books. Uh, this database is used um, by uh, over 500 national institutions uh, on, a, on a daily basis. Uh, now, the computational uh, examples that I've listed, uh, they do show how this potential of, of supercomputing facility can be used. Uh, there are, however, other initiatives and, and other projects such as conferences, uh, most notably the Supercomputing Frontiers Europe, as well as educational and, and, uh, and training activities. Um, it, is, um, it is worth uh, mentioning that uh, apart from the um, Apart from the traditional HPC resources uh, described earlier, uh, we do have a number of um, experimental systems that uh, are used for uh, small scale research and, and development projects. Uh, one such system is the um, NECSX Aurora Tsubasa vector computer, which uh, is used uh, mainly for uh, software development, uh, software vectorization, as well as um, for innovative approaches to uh, solving uh, challenging problems in the domain of uh, 
material science and, uh, and artificial intelligence. Uh, vector computing uh, has been present uh, in the development of uh, supercomputers since uh, the 1970s. So uh, the idea is certainly uh, not new. Uh, in the early days, uh, those machines have been um, standalone units controlled by uh, dedicated operating systems and uh, this modern designs uh, th th this modern design that uh, uh, that we have uh, in ICM is is basically uh, an accelerator in the form of a, uh, a PCI express card uh, called a vector engine and uh, hosted uh, by a standard uh, x86 64 bit uh, server uh, one example of, of a problem that we've been solving with this particular vector computer uh, has to do with uh, quantum physics and the electronic structure uh, calculation of uh, solid state systems uh, in the nanoscale. In, in this particular example, uh, it, is, it is the titanium uh, dioxide. Uh, this example uh, comes from the domain of, of material science and, and this kind of calculations enable us to uh, predict um, the properties of, uh, of a material as a function of various structural uh, defects, for example, or, or other factors. Uh, the important um, aspect of, of this particular project is uh, the scale of the system that uh, that is being described. Uh, the model uh, consisted of uh, nearly a quarter of a billion atoms, and it uh, has been solved uh, efficiently with uh, just eight vector engines communicating uh, via a message passing uh, interface. Uh, such a large system would be practically impossible to describe in uh, in other uh, well-established uh, computational uh, approaches. Uh, this project was uh, also the topic of the uh, master degree thesis of uh, one of the ICN students within our master degree program in, in computational engineering. Uh, the resulting uh, software package optimized for the modern vector computer architecture was published um, as free software and uh, is available in the um, ICM's public code repository. And it is also referenced in, in the paper uh, published in the uh, Computer Physics uh, Communications Journal. Uh, the software is uh, sort of a framework that, uh, and a benchmark uh, as well, that is intended to be a basis uh, to build upon and to extend uh, to other systems and, and, and other properties. Uh, it is also an example of uh, a problem that is very well suited for uh, supercomputers because of the complex uh, uh, mathematical description of uh, of materials in in the nano scale. Uh, let me uh, let me briefly summarize this introductory part of um, of the presentation uh, by saying that uh, it, it is in fact rather a highlight of of our diverse uh, diverse activities. Uh, it does, however, serve as a context in which. Um, we can now move to the main topic, which uh, is the transcontinental uh, ultra-fast uh, data uh, transfer. So I will now uh, hand over to my colleague, uh, Jarosław Skomiał. Uh, thank you very much indeed. OK, thank you, Michal. Now we can proceed to the networking part of this presentation. Uh, as you can see on this simple drawing, uh, there are three main components of uh, an HPC system. So we have a user, a computation nodes with software on it, and of course, storage with data. Everything is connected with a um, high bandwidth network. Uh, but if we go deeper, we can realize that uh, computation nodes have a separate network for management and for orchestration. There is a separate, a separate network for storage. So it gets more and more complicated when you uh, go deeper in this infrastructure. Um, of course, um, in HPC networking, we want to provide the uh, highest bandwidth and uh, lowest possible latency. Of course, with a uh, proper level of resiliency and scalability and at reasonable cost. Uh, so uh, that's why we have uh, our own fiber network uh, at ICM to connect between our both data centers. It's uh, 25 kilometers from each other, and we have a 200 gig uh, interconnection between them. Um, but uh, if we want to go further to operate on the country level, there is a um, national research and educational uh, network in Poland. It's a 7,500 of uh, fiber network between main academic cities in, in Poland. We are connected to uh, Jant and, uh, and CERN. Also, we are, um, we are connected to Amsterdam, London and uh, Frankfurt uh, internet exchange points. Everything is operated by Poznan Super Connect, uh, Supercomputing Center. And um, 
If this is not enough, we can still operate on the European level thanks to Jant Network. And then we can use the Glyph. It's a global Lambda uh, exchange network that uh, we can use to uh, connect to other research institutions worldwide. Uh, this infrastructure was used uh, two years ago to uh, provide uh, to, to run a project uh, with uh, ICM and ISTAR CRC from Singapore and uh, Zatar Corporation to provide a 100 gig link uh, from Poland to Singapore. It's, uh, it's a great result because uh, it, the distance between uh, both countries is uh, 20,000 kilometers. And for this uh, project, we used uh, just regular hardware. Of course, uh, together with infrastructure like uh, like computation nodes and uh, fibers, we need team of uh, hardworking people who can uh, run this project. So we have the team of uh, three people from ICM, five people from uh, Acer CNC, and of course uh, that our team who supported us with uh, software that we used. Uh, altogether, uh, we were supported by Pioneer, Jant, and Singaren network. Uh, the hardware that we used uh, for this project was uh, just a regular hardware that you can that we can uh, find in our data center. So it was uh, two years uh, old uh, servers with uh, Xeon uh, CPUs, 192 gigs of RAM and uh, 100 gig uh, Ethernet cards. As storage, we used uh, last uh, storage on uh, 40 servers. Altogether, it was uh, almost one petabyte of storage. In uh, ASR CRC uh, side, we had uh, just one data transfer node with uh, NVMe storage. As a result, we achieved uh, 60 gigabits on uh, 20,000 kilometers distance. Uh, the preparation time of this project was uh, no more than two weeks, which makes it really fast uh, for uh, such a infrastructure and uh, big team. Uh, Zetter ZX software uh, was a very good tool to, uh, to provide connectivity on such distance and uh, for this, uh, to achieve this goal. Uh, the hardware that we used for this project was really modest and uh, it wasn't top of the shelf uh, hardware. With this uh, infrastructure, we can uh, move one petabyte of storage in less than two days. The impact of this uh, project was uh, to show that uh, we can learn how to transfer and store and compute data because uh, actually um, data is oil of uh, modern digital age. Uh, we can uh, run an um, environment of uh, worldwide distributed uh, HPC centers who provide, which provide uh, in a different manner uh, computation nodes or storage uh, infrastructure. Uh, long distance data transfer and computation is possible for uh, research uh, units. And of course, uh, separation of storage and computation nodes, it's not a problem in these days. Uh, we met uh, quite good recognition of our projects, uh, which uh, was presented in multiple uh, branch portals. Also, it was presented on uh, Supercomputing uh, 2019 conference. It wasn't uh, just one uh, network-oriented activity in HPC environment, because uh, in 2019, we also uh, collaborated with uh, Infinera Corporation, uh, and we tested the uh, solution to transfer 1.2 terabit on a short distance of 25 kilometers. Uh, also, we are engaged in a DTN infrastructure worldwide. It started in 2017 and we still operate the DTN in our data center. Mm. The other uh, project also started in uh, 2017. It, uh, we joined the global research platform with our data transfer node. 
which helped us to understand and uh, learn how to transfer data between uh, different parties of this network. Uh, one of the uh, our newest activity in the network world is uh, joining a signet network. In this um, in this society, we uh, provide our virtual lab, and also we are active members of uh, supercomputing conference. Uh, our last uh, activity in networking was. Um, joining Data Mover Challenge as infrastructure provided. In uh, this society, almost 20 research units uh, from all over the world uh, provide 100 gig uh, connection between each other and uh, different research units and teams can uh, test their um, solutions to transfer fast data. Okay. Um, I think that's it for uh, for our presentation. You are very welcome to uh, visit our website, and we are very, always very open to collaborate in different HPC-oriented uh, areas. Uh, and uh, yes, thank you so much for attending this presentation. Also, would like to thank uh, say thank you to Polish Investment and Trade Agency uh, for having us here.